Hello, welcome to NECC Today, a show produced by the students for the students of NECC, featuring the best things going both on and off campus. I'm Chris Duby, and today we'll be learning about the NECC Observer and Shoe Town Art Center. But first, theater can bring so much joy into people's lives. It is an integral part of so many people's worlds, both young and old. One such theater that many consider home around here is Acting Out Theater in Lawrence. Roving reporter Matt Sharn met with Acting Out staff and volunteers. Acting Out Theater is located in the heart of Lawrence at 56 Island Street. It's a place where family and friends come together. Linda Schoonmaker, one of the founders of Acting Out Theater, has been involved for over 20 years. You know, I started acting out in 2002 and it was just on a whim. Uh, a friend of mine, we were both in a production of Fiddler on the Roof and we said we thought it would be nice to give kids an opportunity on stage to be heard as well as seen. So we decided to start something in that summer of 2002 and we ended up with 12 children and then it just sort of grew from there. You know, we wanted to give these kids an opportunity to be seen and heard. I go, but the bigger thing was is that I felt growing up that I never had the opportunity to be comfortable with uh, about me, myself. And so what, what we wanted to do was really give people, not just kids eventually, but everybody, an opportunity to feel good in their own skin, to feel good about themselves and be confident. For some, it helped them rekindle their joy of theater. My name is Cameron Whalen, and I've been involved with acting out for um, about a year and a half since the spring of 2022. Uh, my favorite memory from acting out is definitely doing Spring Awakening, which I did in January of 2023, so last year. Um, made a lot of great friends, and it was just a really sentimental show for me, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Just a great community here. For many people, this theater has been a second home to them for a long time. Uh, my name is David Boudreau, and I've been in, uh, involved with acting out since uh, its very early beginnings, over 20 years ago. And uh, a friend of mine, Steve Daly, asked if uh, said there was a new theater group um, being formed in Lawrence, and uh, they were doing a show, and did I want to audition? And I thought, well, why not? So um, I auditioned and got into the first show, and I've been in probably uh, 35 productions uh, in the, over the last 20 years. My name is Abigail Tanna and I've been involved in acting out since 2005 when I was five years old. I used to do the kid classes at the Trinitarian Church with Linda and Penn. And my name is Molly Tannett, no coincidence. This is my daughter, I don't know if you can see a resemblance. <laughs> and I would take Abby to her classes and then realized I thought Theater seems kind of cool. So I started doing shows with Acting Out in 2008 and been doing it ever since. Um, I don't know if I could articulate that that well. Uh, acting Out was sort of where I fell in love with theater again after um, high school where I didn't do theater for a while. And um, I've done a lot of shows here just it's community, it's, um, to be candid, it's like a really, really big part of my life. I think it's a very welcoming uh, community and um, it's, it's just been a, a real uh, joy uh, added to my life to um, uh, have a lot of fun. I, I wanna have a belly laugh at every single rehearsal and, and that ends up happening. Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> So it means like I guess friendship and family um, like my best friend who I talk to all the time I met at acting out um, she lives in New York now and does her own she does scenic design the connection for me both with my my daughters as young people and the other young people um, there's a gentleman behind the camera right now I met him as a young man just starting out in theater and they become like your your other children and um, and there's you know, it's a give and take. They keep us young, they look to us for guidance, and it's just the best. And there's, you can't, you can't replace that. Well, uh, you know, sometimes I tell people, I don't know how to explain acting out to people sometimes, but I think that it means family, community. It's a place where people are comfortable with each other. It's a place where I found all my friends. I moved here in the 80s and I made friends with my other 
uh, business friends that I worked with at the time, but nothing like I've had since I've been with Acting Out. And it's been a really, I've seen a lot of other people create friendships that are long term through uh, being here. So I think that's really what it is. It's community and family and, and it makes a difference in not just my life, but in many others. So great to see people getting involved in their community in such a creative way. For more info on Acting Out Theater, you can visit their website at actingouttheater.com or their Facebook and Instagram pages at Acting Out Theater. The Observer has been around since 1962. There have been hundreds of thousands of articles documenting world news, as well as local news that goes on in the Haverhill area and on the NECC campus. Today, I'll be taking you inside the process to observe The Observer. So my name is Mary Jo Schaefer. I am the faculty observer for our student newspaper, the NECC Observer. And I've been at Northern Essex for 14 years. Yeah. Seems like a long time. So my background before coming here is in news, is in journalism. I've worked as a reporter and editor at newspapers. Uh, and then um, got into teaching as well, right? So um, one of the things I try to do as, a, as the advisor is bring that real world experience from, from you know, practicing journalism and doing journalism uh, and share that with the students, you know, so like I know what it's like to put out a paper because I've done it, you know, before in my career and I still work part time at a newspaper as well. The students, uh, they do all the work. Uh, I'm here to help them, but they report the stories, they do the interviews, they design the newspaper, they decide what to put in the newspaper. So we have students that are on staff, and then we also have students who are taking journalism classes. You don't necessarily have to be on staff to get your stuff in the Observer, right? But it's the student editors who are the really most important part, because this really is, it's the student newspaper for Northern Essex, and so without the students, it wouldn't exist, so. So if they are doing news or features or campus life or sports or arts and entertainment, it's those fundamentals of the basics of good journalism. So they have to interview people. They have to find human being sources that they can talk to, quote them, all that stuff, right? So that's the big thing. Like You could still talk to people for opinion too, but also Kim does a lot of research, reading other articles and stuff like that too, um, to get her facts that she's going to use. I started with one of Mary Jo's journalism classes back in fall of 2021, and then I joined the Observer spring of 2022 as the opinion ed editor. I was a career hairdresser, and then I had a bad back, so I had to find something else to do, and I've always liked to write. I feel like I'm not as well with spoken words as I am with written words. I get the opinion page, too, so I love, love throwing my opinion around, hoping somebody hears what I have to say. Why do you think the Observer has won so many awards? I you know here at the Observer, there's a lot of talented, driven students that come in to write about things that are going on campus or nationwide in the area, and um, they put their heart and soul into the stories. Yeah. Seems like there's a lot of passion that goes behind the articles that are made here, that they have a lot of sense about what they're writing about, and they like doing it. It's very, very much. My passion is driven by really loving journalism, really thinking journalism is really important, and that it's, it's wonderful to be able to work with students and having them learn you know, how to do good journalism and hopefully go out into the world, whether or not they're gonna become professional journalists. I actually think understanding a little bit about journalism is important for all citizens, because in order to be participating members of a democracy, you know, it's helpful to understand kind of how news works and stuff like that. So sharing that with students and then also getting to see students actually produce, right, award-winning work that other people in the college community can see and read. And it actually can, for all the reasons that I am drawn to journalism, that's all stuff that is relevant to the Observer too because the students are picking the stories, they're writing about things that matter to them, 
and then in theory that should also be impactful and matter to you know our audience. You can find the Observer newsstands all around the NDCC campus, so pick one up today. Now, let's take a look at Shoetown Art Center, a place for students and adults to creatively express themselves. We got a chance to talk with Emily Bulger and her students about Shoetown and what a special place it is. Hello. Welcome to Shoetown Art Center, a place that has been creating a safe space and great memories for adults and kids of all ages. Founded in 2010 in Haverhill, Massachusetts, the Shoetown Art Center has been providing its students with an outlet to feed their creative imaginations. Today, we sat down with Emily Lawrence Bolger and some of the students and employees of the Art Center to talk about what a special place it is. Originally, um, across the street, I got an artist space, an artist studio, and um, I just got a, a, st a studio for me to do my art personally. And at that time, I was working as a special ed teacher and um, a program coordinator for individuals with disabilities. The original mantra was to provide a, a place for, in the arts for individuals with disabilities to come in and, and do work that was more expressive. After COVID, there was an influx of adults that um, showed interest in pottery and ceramics. And right now, that's the majority of what we, we offer. So I started at the studio at 14, started peer mentoring at like 15, 16 here. I do a lot with the kids, I do a lot with the teen group, and then I do uh, all of the adult classes here as well. My dreams to like actually be able to do this. I started working here in March 2016, so this is my eight years. Started out just doing like little cleanups here and there and then now I can teach every class. I like the studio because you get to really make whatever you'd like. Um, anything that you can think of you can make here. I just made a soy sauce dish. I started taking classes about a year and a half ago, a little over a year and a half ago. As soon as I walked in I said this is my second home. After opening the studio, Emily took part in helping to create the funky shoe sculptures that you can find all around Haverhill today, making them a staple of our community. The shoes are originally was a project by um, Team Haverhill. They funded and started the Shoe Liberation Project. There was a company that would have molds and they would cast them and they would cast them out of fiberglass. I was one of the artists. I did uh, three of the shoes. Throughout all of Emily's projects, the one thing that they all have in common is the one thing that she finds the most rewarding. Why you're doing it isn't necessarily for the final piece, it's for the process. It's very interesting to see people in the community creatively express themselves. Be sure to take a walk around Haverhill and check out the shoes for yourself, including one at our very own NECC campus. That wraps up this episode of NECC Today. View our other episodes on Channel 6 and 22 in Haverhill or at HaverhillCommunityTV.org. Until next time, I'm Chris Duby, and we'll see you on campus.